so I'm just going to go out on a limb and just talk about what comes to mind, I suppose. Um, I was thinking about a couple of things. Um, okay, so, I know this might be out there, but I, I do believe that we have experienced many different lives, many different, um, we've experienced ourselves in different things. So like you start off as like, I don't know, it's just like, you know, off the top of my head, you start off as a mineral and then you move up and graduate to a plant and then you move up into, um, an animal to human being and then it goes on and on. Um, so I think a more advanced soul has experienced a lot of things through many lifetimes. And that's why they have the wisdom and the presence that they do in the world. Um, in this world, it's just like compared to all the other worlds that exist, right? All the other dimensions. Um, and then I was thinking about one of my lifetimes. I was thinking for sure I was a monk in one of my lifetimes. And I think that's why I, I enjoy solitude. I enjoy um, self-reflection, contemplating, ruminating, etc. And um, I remember I went through a phase of life where I kind of wanted to be a monk again and go to the mountains or go live in a monastery and just live in this serene atmosphere and just divulge in self-contemplation or, you know, like entering this, this state of mind where I was just predominantly focusing on Supreme Consciousness. I went through a phase where I just kind of wanted to leave this all behind and go in a mountain and meditate all the time, right? But then, as I got older, I realized that was the easy way. I'm not saying that it's wrong or right, but if you think about it, if you go to the mountain, you live in a monastery, and you're away from all this chaos... There's actually two scenarios that came to mind now. You know, you, it would be easy to be at peace, you know? Easier, easier. I shouldn't say easy because if you're not happy with yourself or satisfied with yourself, it, it, no matter where you are, it's going to be a battle. But it would be easier to get to that state of mind, right? I think it would be more challenging though to immerse yourself in all this activity, to immerse yourself in this space, you know, with all these people crammed into a space, and to see how far you've gotten along the road of self-mastery. You know, because I could go to a forest and be at peace. I could go to a forest by myself and just feel euphoric you know what I mean and like one with everything but then when you throw me into this into confined spaces with a lot of people a lot of energy a lot of personalities a lot of um you know conflict it's a lot more challenging to maintain that peace of mind and that self-mastery you know so I think um I probably chose to get out of the mountain and come into this to enhance and evolve myself and to kind of gauge where I'm at and to really um, look at areas of myself that still need to be fine-tuned if you get what I'm saying like you know you come across challenging people or situations or circumstances and if you can like move through that with complete calmness and peace, you know, more power to you. You're you're there. But if you're triggered 
but you still find yourself triggered or reactive, then that just kind of is a telltale sign that you still have work to do, you know? <clears throat> and you wouldn't have these opportunities or the contrast to gauge where you're at if you didn't immerse yourself in society, you know? Um, what was the second thing I was going to talk about? Oh, I was going to, okay. So I was having a conversation. I've noticed like a lot of people, um, that I interact with, they've never experienced a long-term relationship. They're kind of like, you know, like hooking up with all these different people and they think that's okay. And it is okay if that's where you're at. Um... And I remember asking one of these people, like, well, you know, what have you learned from hooking up with all these different people? Have you found what you were looking for? And this person said that they didn't find what they're looking for. And um, they said that they didn't even know what... Um, they, what they, what they wanted. And I, I looked at the person and I said, you know what you want. And the person was like, no, I actually, I don't know what I want. And he's like, so what do I, what do I want? And I responded by saying, well, I can't give you that answer or else it would ruin all the fun. So I don't know if you get, get, um, what I was trying to say with my response. It was basically, um, kind of planting the seed for self introspection and pointing the person in the right direction without actually giving them the answer. Because you, I think you know where the answer can be found. And I think you know what we are all looking for. And those who haven't found it yet, they keep searching. They keep searching in different people, in different things, in different experiences, in different... In stuff. In stuff. All this stuff. They keep buying all this stuff. Buying all these experiences. Buying all these things. Um, searching in other people. You know? And I think um, that search is what will ultimately lead you back to what is essential. If you followed me that far. Anyhow, I'm going to stop talking. But a lot of people who flit and flutter from place to place, from person to person, I feel like they are dissatisfied. They are dissatisfied, they are not at ease, and they're searching for something. Found it yet. But eventually we all find it, and we progress, and we move on. Anyhow, I'm sorry if this conversation was boring, and I'm sorry if I didn't make sense. Um... If you learned something cool, if you didn't learn anything cool, blessings to one and all. Amen.